I, I left the restaurant world and bought four pigs and the kind of rest is history. It sends shivers down my spine hearing you say that. It's so amazing. Cheers. Yeah, to your health. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome everybody to Nick Nian's Whiskey Six Social. I'm delighted to welcome today Julius Roberts, chef, first generation farmer and on his own journey to self-sufficiency. Welcome Julius and thank you so much for joining us via Zoom from Dorset. Lovely to meet you. So the reason for these chats is to talk about doing things differently and not following the normal path in life. So I guess, Julius, the place to start with that is your uh, change from working in the restaurant scene in London to farming. What? Uh, tell us a little bit about that change and what brought that about. Um, well, I originally studied sculpture at uni with the kind of ambition of being an artist. Um, got back to London after three, no, four amazing years at art school and just couldn't see that path panning out. So went and got a job in a local cafe around the corner. But yeah, I started working in this restaurant. It wasn't anything, you know, serious necessarily, but I got on really well with the manager there. And he said, look, I'm leaving. Um, I'm going to go start this place called Noble Rot and be the manager there. Why don't you come for an interview? Went and met the chefs. We got on really well. Um, and, you know, so luckily started working there. And as great as it was learning all these amazing things, you know, it, it was difficult. And the hours do get to you. The stress gets to you. And I just did feel myself start to kind of wither a bit. Um, but I did need to make a change. And the thing that inspired it was the, the restaurant world is one of the most amazing driving forces behind sustainability and changes in farming. And you get these bright eyed farmers and growers turning up in the morning, you know, all tanned and looking really healthy and smiling, bringing incredible boxes of vegetables or whatever it may be. And I thought, Phew. They, they look like they're living quite well. You know, I might get more on that side. Yeah. You know, and the world of sustainability was really kicking off. You know, as a young person, my ears were really open to it. And I thought I'm going to go and chase, you know, the producing side of things, still stay with cooking, but, you know, be quite producer led. So I went, I, I left the restaurant world and bought four pigs and the kind of rest is history. Yeah. Did you really start with no knowledge? No, no, no knowledge of farming whatsoever. So it's been an incredibly steep and joyful learning curve. Um, okay, wonderful. Well, part of the reason we're here is also to talk about whiskey. Yes. So do you normally drink whiskey? Do you ever drink whiskey? Have you ever tried whiskey soda before? I have drunk whiskey in the past. I've got your beautiful bottle here, which Excellent. is absolutely stunning. Amazing. And it's nice having a longer drink, isn't it? It is. It's also, the other thing I like about it is it's quite savory. It's not like um, gin and tonic, which I also love, but it can be quite sweet. It's got yeah, a lovely yeah. kind of savoury edge to it. So cheers. Yeah, to your health. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. What, what am I tasting? Oh, excellent question. Um, well, we like to think there are kind of three elements to our whiskey. The first we describe as lemon posset. Now, it depends if you eat lemon posset <laughs> or not, but if you don't, yeah. <laughs> the other way of describing it is kind of creamy citrus. Yeah. Creamy is, it is, it's fat in the mouth. It's very kind of circular around the taste buds, I guess. Exactly, that. which is partly the reason it works so well with soda, actually. Interesting. You can get yeah. much stronger, older tasting whiskies that actually, when you put them with soda, just go completely bleh. Um, the second flavour is a kind of stone fruit flavour that I get, so apricots and peaches and things. Yeah, I taste that. That's very good. And then I mean, the creaminess thing is a revelation. Yeah, really it's lovely, is. It's isn't it? So it's just flat in the mouth. Mm. And then there's also a spiciness to it. So a kind of spiced rye bread is the way we like to describe it. And that comes from the casks that we use. So we I just kind of puckered my lips and you do really get that at the end. And that all comes from different parts of the process. So the fruitiness, the kind of stone fruitiness comes from the actual spirit that we make, whereas the spiced a rye breadness comes from the cask that we mature it in. Mm. So, and then thinking about sustainability, I would also love to pick your brains on that. So you've talked a lot about um, kind of sustainability in farming and I would, yeah, I'd love to hear your views on what you're doing, where the world is at the moment. We've just moved from Suffolk to Dorset, my family, and gone from really quite a small piece of land to, to, to a bit more land. 
And the lady who lived here before us was a serious nature nut. You know, she planted incredible woods, um, all of the fields are kind of ancient pastures and ancient meadows. The learning curve now is how to preserve and improve that. You know, I've been massively influenced by Isabella Tree's book, Wilding. You know, there's such a natural affinity for a well-trimmed hedge, a kind of ploughed field. Um, uh, um, a topped field where the grass is all cut short after the animal's been through it. That is not the way to do things. You know, nature is not tidy. Um, and so, you know, when I'm taking my animals off the field, there's a lot of tufts of grass, there's this, there's that. And instead of tidying that up, we're just leaving it. And the most extraordinary thing has happened. We, we have this barn owl that's moved in and is hunting our fields every single afternoon and evening without fail. Because where we've left the grass long and tufty, the mice and the voles are much happier and feel safer. And this barn owl, you know, needs our land. It's extraordinary. You know, it's, it's been such a kind of incredible thing to see, you know, the impact of what we've been doing right there. So starts. Right, and so quickly as well. It sends shivers down my spine hearing you say that. It's so amazing. And then finally, I guess, is there anything that you think other people who are watching this can learn or embrace from your kind of journey over the last few years? I think the main thing I say is never be afraid to make mistakes. Um, you know, I, I was definitely initially thinking I'd be a sculptor. I got back to London and made a U-turn. Um, I bought some pigs, you know, pigs very quickly turned into goats and sheep and chickens in a veg garden. And I've made so many mistakes along the way because, you know, I really am learning on the job. But mistakes are the best sources for learning. Well, thank you so much. That was oh, so pleasure. fun to chat to you. I absolutely love your story. I oh, can't well, wait to see what happens next. Likewise. And thank you so much for introducing me to this fantastic whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julius. And for those of you watching, please follow Julius's journey and to see what happens next on his Instagram at Telltale Food.